This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Hello. Yeah, thanks for joining us here on Josh Has Autism. (laughs) We're at it once again. Yeah. Yep. And um, today I have some some questions we we did cover before. We talked a little bit about some, I guess, repetitive behaviors that you have or some um, patterns that you have. But I kind of want to talk more about those today than we did last time. Okay. Um, So I know that everybody has, I think just the population in general, like they have like chatter going on in their head all the time, right? This this, this self talk stuff and Are you hearing voices in your head? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and we and we're all doing fine. <laughs> uh, so now that we all have that, you know, and and we do all have some patterns that we do whether it's doing things in a certain order or you know, sometimes they are called habits. You know, somebody that that bites their nails, that might be done in a certain, you know, that that's a habit, but is it a pattern of right. doing that? You know, right. I've seen that before. Um, so specifically, what I want to talk about today and ask you about is that for you, the patterns that you have, I kind of want to get down to when they started and how you feel if you're not able to fulfill those patterns okay so I don't know would you call it a compulsion borderline compulsion maybe yeah uh, Border, borderline compulsion yeah um, so let's start with some of the things that you do mm-hmm. and, but I, I think uh, yeah so let's just start there because I really want to hear what you do and why you do it and uh, so some of the things that you do that we've talked about before. Um, There's a spitting when I brush my teeth. Right. Okay. You uh, spit in a pattern. Yes, I do. It's actually a rhythm. It is a rhythm. I yes. can hear the rhythm when you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Bum ba da 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 bum. That's a lot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's. But that 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 includes. The brush, the bristles on the toothbrush getting wet again, mm-hmm. me sucking it in and spitting. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah, that's when I hear it. Is there an amount of time that you spend actually brushing your teeth? Like, is there a pattern that happens when you brush your teeth? Or Surprisingly, is that just- no. It's just when I spit. Okay. And it used to be much longer than that. Oh my gosh, it was, yeah. It was like it's like a whole song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. It took. It took a while. Yeah. And do you recall the first time that you ever felt like you had to do something like that? Like you felt like there was this pattern that had to happen in order. I'm assuming for you to feel better. I. The clearest time that I really remember starting to do things like that was around middle school. Um, specifically around 6th or 7th grade. And one of the things that, that started it was whenever I'd be in a vehicle, uh, as we'd pass by a, let, let's say, a telephone pole, if it's on the right side, I push down on my left toes. If it's on the right side of the street, you press down with your left toes. As we as I pass it, yes. Okay. So it's like a quick dude. Mm-hmm. It, that's the that's the sidewalk or that's the break in the sidewalk? Or No break no, in- that that's that's the uh that's the telephone poles. Oh. Oh, I didn't know about the telephone poles. Yeah, that's where it started at. Okay. Yeah, what the the sidewalk thing that that you that you're talking about came about a little bit later. Okay. Where let's say it's a, the start of a road or an entrance to a driveway or something like that. Mhm. If it's on the right side of the road, 
at the start of it, I push down with my right toes because it's going, it's opening up. And whenever it reaches the other side of it, where it becomes a curb again, Mm -hmm. or grass, I push down with my left toes. Okay. And it's the opposite in both cases with the driveway and the telephone poles for the opposite side of the road. Okay, but you can't do telephone poles and a sidewalk at the same time. Yeah. You can? Yeah. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so your left foot is about the telephone poles no. or the light poles? No, no. Uh, if it's on the left side of the street, if the telephone pole is on the left side of the street, I do use my right foot. Okay. Okay, so the left side of the street, regardless of what it is, you do that with your right foot. If it's on the left, on the right side of the street, regardless of what it is, you do it with the left foot. Incorrect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. Let's All just right. try this again. All right. Let me let me explain it. Let's say I'm going okay. down the road. Okay. Then we, since we live in America, we're on the right side of the road. Mm-hmm. So. Let's say there's a driveway on the right, followed by a telephone pole, followed by a driveway on the left, followed by a telephone pole on the left. Okay. So, I would start with the driveway on the right, my right toes go down, driveway ends, my left toes go down. The telephone pole on the right, my left toes go down. Because it's on, because on the right side, so it's on the inside where the curve of the telephone pole would meet the curve of the inside of the foot. Okay. And then, as we're going, then that's the driveway on the left. It's my left toes at the beginning, my right toes to end it, mm-hmm. and my right toes for this telephone pole that's on the left side. Okay. Did you give any thought to that pattern when it started? And is that why you do it in that particular way? Or did it just start happening and then you recognized what you were doing? It started out where I'd hold my toes down uh, for the entire... Like, if it's on the right side, I'd hold my toes down for the entire driveway. And then I'd and then I'd release them whenever the driveway ended. Okay, and that would also be the case when there was a um, the the curb ended and there would be a street. Yes. What about if the if the side of the road was um, a wooded area or a, a grass instead of a sidewalk? Then typically I only have to deal with the telephone poles. Okay, so you don't do grass and if there's a break with a. With a driveway. Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. So it's not the it's not the depth of it. It's the it, it's just it's, a dif- it, it's, distinction it's a, between going from one to the next. Yeah, it's either, okay. it's it's always either a road or a driveway. Sometimes sometimes the sidewalk curb itself. Okay. If there is a curb. Okay. All right, got it. Uh, I might ask you more about that. Well, probably what I should have started with um, in the very beginning was to let everybody know that what I want to talk to you about today is what I'm calling, it's like the, your invisible patterns. Mm-hmm. So there are things that are constantly going on um, within you, like you do different, you walk, the, we'll talk about this too, the way that you're walking, the, yeah. you know, the, the, the way that you're brushing your teeth that you just explained yeah those are patterns that have come about that people would not necessarily notice those things right um somebody heard you brushing your teeth the first time they wouldn't recognize that that was a pattern it was only after they just think i was weird (laughs) (laughs) thorough (laughs) because it takes a while it's probably thorough um but I want to. I want to ask you. Do you remember? So you said that it started with with telephone poles. But do you remember how it felt, and if if it resolved any thing that you were experiencing? Because what I do know is that 
the patterns can be used there like a tool for self calming. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that 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 with the wraparound services that you had to the TSS and what have you, you had been taught different ways to de-escalate yourself when you were feeling very agitated or yeah. um, upset. Did these things start in a way to help to calm you down in any way, or do you know why? Wh- what it, what um, emotion or what sensation came along with that? Do you know how they came about? In regards to the street thing, mm-hmm. honestly, I bo- if I'm remembering this correctly, you it was actually because you had asked me if I did anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're giving me a, look, a confused look. I'm serious. It was it was brought to my attention that some autistic people do things like this mm-hmm. by you. Okay. And so it was like, huh? I know why. I, I know what you're talking about. It's and and I remember. Okay, you're right. You're right. I have to tell you, I don't remember this conversation, mm-hmm. but I remember. The lead up, it must have been the lead up because I remember beginning to understand that there were these patterns that yes, that that I had been made aware of that some people with autism have yeah. find particular ways of doing things that that help them to relax, yeah. to calm down. One of the things that you did was was the clenching of the fists. Yeah, and then re- and then letting go of the fists, which mm-hmm. is me releasing the stress. Right. Releasing the anger. Right. And we tried, you know, having real smooth crystals that you, maybe you could keep one in your pocket or yeah. something like that that would help to soothe you. Yeah. Right. So while I don't remember this specific conversation that you're talking about, mm-hmm. I remember becoming aware that there were these things that took place so that must be when we talked about it I remember exactly where we were when you brought it up (laughs) where were we? we were on our way down towards Walmart in Pennsylvania Okay. the one that was in York Okay. going down that road right Uh, man it's been years since I thought about this whole road um that was 74. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was just past Domino's. Or Pizza Hut. Okay. It was between Pizza... This just south of Pizza Hut and where the... Where the Church of the Open Door now closed is. <laughs> That's so funny. The Church of the Open Door that was like padlocked and chained closed. Yes. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. So, so this conversation took place in Shiloh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I just ask you if there's anything that you do. Yeah. So you were doing it un- subconsciously? You were doing it. You were not aware that this is something that you were doing. I'm not sure. Okay. I know that it was that I either started then, or it was brought to my attention that I was doing it then. I would think that it was brought to your attention that you were doing it because I can't imagine. Well, I, I shouldn't. I, anything's possible. Yeah. But me asking you a question, I don't think. Usually, me asking you a question doesn't kick start you into action. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, do you want to go to the gym? Nah. Right, <laughs> right. I asked you how long ago. You're still sitting there in your t-shirt and pajama bottoms. <laughs> right, right. So, the reason I think it's significant is because... You have these patterns that take place all the time that people don't necessarily um, recognize. So you, as an individual, have these particular patterns that -hmm. take place in your life every day. And I think it's not straight across the board that it happens with everybody that's autistic, but it sure does seem like there are these patterns that take place. And you called it earlier today when I... Uh, when I said, uh, I just gave you the title of what we're talking about, and Mm -hmm. you said, oh, the quirkiness. Yeah. So, yeah, I think think 
quirkiness is not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there's something that you do that is even more perplexing to me than the curbs and the the, the uh, driveways and the poles that you do with your feet. Mm-hmm. Um, this is something that you've tried to explain to me before, and I just don't get it. So, go slow mm-hmm. <laughs> and tell me again about your foot placement when you walk. Okay. I Whenever I walk... I try and make sure that the inside of my feet at some point uh, meet where an angle of some object or seat or whatever, or a corner of a wall, where that corner points to would hit the inside of my feet. Is there a certain place on the inside of your foot? Is it no. the arch? Just, just on that side. Okay. Just on the arch side of my foot. Okay. And what about the other foot? Same. So is it like it was before then? So then it's the right foot... For the left side. And the left foot for the right side. Yes. Is there anything that you do according to the outside of your foot? Kick soccer balls? (laughs) Right. No, um, not really. Uh, I mean, you know what? No, there is something. Uh, whenever there's an opening, like a door or something, or mm-hmm. a door frame, mm-hmm. let's say that it's a door frame. I'm even with that, with the inside of my foot. on the re- Like, let's say it's on the left side of the hall, mm-hmm. and it's a door frame, mm-hmm. door opening, and then the other door frame. Right. Right foot. Left foot, right foot. And the left foot would be in between where those two corners meet. What do you mean right foot, left foot, right foot? Right foot for even with the with the frame. Okay. Left foot inside of where the corner meets. Mm-hmm. Uh, the corner of the two frames would, would point and meet. Mm-hmm. So it would be in between the hole of the entrance way and okay. that point. Okay. And then the right foot would would again be even with the with the uh, frame. With that being said, sometimes I'm I have a longer stride. Mm-hmm. So let's say that my left foot is just before the the left side of of the entrance way so on, on the left side of the uh, frame mm-hmm. so it's just before it so I take another step my right foot where on the inside of it will meet where the frames would point and meet and because it's a door frame there's no edges there's no corners well there are like it like you see that mm-hmm I'm pointing to to the closet right now. This it's an open frame closet. There's a point where it meets the end the edge of the wall and the frame itself. Right? Like making a like a what was it called a point? A 90 degree angle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where that 90 degree angle is pointing? Like an arrow, mm-hmm. like let's say that the, the, it, right. it's make, made into an arrow symbol. Mm-hmm. Right, got it. Just the line in the middle goes forward all the way to my foot. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> this... It's easy. That's so, it's easy? That sounds... <laughs> Oh my god! It's so much easier to just do it than it is to explain it. I've seen you do it. Mm-hmm. And what's what? What I'm talking about is that this is something that you do now. That's just part of your 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 walk. Yeah. And you do it in such a way that works for you. And doesn't look weird. It doesn't look weird. And it's also it's easy to you for you. It sounds very complicated to me, 
But the thing that really stands out to me is that's an awful lot for you to be aware of when you're just walking. Yeah. And, and the reason that I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, that's so hard for me to follow, is that, like I said in the very beginning, everybody has their own thing that they do. Right? Well, imagine this. Sometimes I do the angles when, when I'm in the vehicle as well, oh. on top of, of the <laughs> poles in the driveways. Oh, man. So you can imagine. Okay. It's So that gets to the point of this whole podcast, which is there, you're dealing with so many things that those of us that are not you are aware of. Yeah. And I'm thinking that if this happens with you, then, and, and I have learned that people that have autism, it's, this kind of stuff happens, and we call it the quirkiness, right? <laughs> so, you know, there's so much more that's going on than we're aware of. Um, and it, that seems to me that it's overwhelming. Mm. And it seems to me that if I had to be in charge of that, I would be exhausted hmm. because it seems like, um, is that something that you're mindful of or is that connected to a feeling, a, 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 an emotion that you have? Or is that, you think, again, like that mechanism just to kind of calm down or you don't know? I think that it is something that I do not necessarily to calm down, mm -hmm. but it helps me focus and concentrate. Like it, you know how sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days. Mm-hmm. Right. And how even the little smallest thing can mess it up or make it better. Right. Sure. That's tenfold for me. Mm -hmm. And let's say I'm having to hurry through, hurry through what I do. Mm -hmm. It messes it up. It messes up my day so bad. Right. Right. And I've so, seen. I've seen that, and I've also seen. You can tell me if this is in the same category. I've also seen. That if your favorite color is blue green, yes. If your blue green shirt, if if that's what you have to wear, then you tend to be in a better mood than if you're if that's not clean. Yeah. If that's not what you're wearing, yeah. so you have these favorite things, these favorite colors, and I've seen that if that's not available to you, that can make the day that so it's not such a good day. Yeah. Right? As weird as it may sound, yes. Um, it's not so much clothes anymore. Mm -hmm. But yes, for the longest time it, it had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're not, I don't think that we're talking about when there's a change in plans. That's something different than what we're talking about. That's something that you don't like change. No. You want to know what's happening before it happens. You want to be given notice about it. And so that I can adjust properly and, and, and come to terms with it, really. Right. So even if it's a day, uh, there's been times where we had an appointment and something happened and that appointment had to get changed. We got a call. That appointment is not going to happen. It's going to happen the next day. Mm -hmm. Um that can be very overwhelming mm -hmm. to you because you've geared up for that particular event. Yes. So it feels to me that that is kind of in a different category, though, because what we're talking about is patterns. Mm -hmm. But it is, I think it is... It's, it's part of the bigger picture. Right, sure, sure. Yeah. And I think it's worth noting because the thing that's, uh, that I'm getting out of what you're describing is that it just seems so daunting. It just seems so overwhelming that 
what you're just walking through the down the hall and things have to be in a certain way in order for you to do that we 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 share the same hallway mm -hmm. and I've never once had that those thoughts that I had to consider thank goodness because I would be stuck in the <laughs> hallway but you found a way that really works for you yeah what happens and I'll, I'll ask you this because dad dad wanted me to ask you this question okay he said so what happens he said if you're in a in a round room and I said well okay so it's not that you're getting put in a round room, but what if there's a room without corners, a, a situation where you don't have the corners, you don't have the edges like that? What happens? Do you look for them? Like, let's just I, say you're... In a even if I'm not consciously looking for corners, I still look for them. Right. But in this situation that you're proposing... A round room that has no corners. Would that be? Are stressful? you trying to put me in a bubble? <laughs> well, no. I tried. To, I tried to phrase it so it didn't sound like like <laughs> like, like ridiculous. But, bubble but, boy. But, but, but but if there were no corners like that, mm -hmm. you're looking for them. So my question is. Since finding them seems to be something that calms you down, this pattern calms you down, the, would the lack of the corners agitate you? Let me put it this way. If I was in a round room, let's say, you know what, let's not even call it a room. Let's say it's one of those uh, clear balls or whatever that that people go inside of and roll down a hill on. You know what I mean? What I'm talking about? A barrel? <laughs> a tube? No. No. It's actually like a giant blow-up hamster ball. <laughs> and then people roll down hills in them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'd still try and do the, do the corners from outside of it. You would still try to do the corners from outside of it. The corners that were outside of it, I'd still try and do it even though I'm inside the ball. So, you're walking around a, um, a, a an oval track. Mm-hmm. Bleachers. Oh. So you go outside of that immediate area. Yeah. And... And let's say that there is... The high jump thing with the with the padded block, mm -hmm. the corners of the block. Okay. So, do you anticipate where you're going to step, or is it in the moment that you're making the step? Honestly, it's kind of a mix. Um, I look forward maybe four or five steps, but okay. at the same time, I'm t uh, things move. Uh, things aren't always where they're supposed to be. And so I have to take that in, into consideration in the moment. Okay. And, and I know that I've just said this a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that feels so daunting mm -hmm. and cumbersome. Mm -hmm. But to you, you're saying that it's... It, it just is. Do you think that that though has anything to do with you with the, the the exhaustion that you experience sometimes or the um just because point where you social... have to take a break i believe it's possible that that's the case um i believe that also has to deal with just me being in a in a social interaction on a big scale like, like for example, a party that's going on. Okay. Let's say it was Haley's birthday. Okay. Oh. Uh, Haley's birthday was uh, was a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. And the. 
I get so easily uh, flustered at things like that and just drained that I have to leave the room and go to my room or something like that and lay down and just relax for a little bit. And well, that's a social that's a social interaction. But at the same time, I'm also dealing with all of these corners. Well, that's my whole point. That's that's the question that I'm trying to get to. Yeah, like, is get that, down to that. Is that on top of the other things that you find difficult, mm-hmm. like social interaction? Mm-hmm. If you've got this going on all the time before you even leave your room, you're you're calculating. You're you're you're. You know, where are you going to place your foot? What's you're always looking. You're aware of what's yeah, what's around you. Yeah, which, as strange as it may sound, also helped me with my uh, spatial awareness and my reflexes mm-hmm. th- and different things like that. My motor skills and. Because of the motor skills that I gained, I'm able to do different activities like soccer, Mm -hmm. like dodgeball, Mm -hmm. even though I don't do dodgeball anymore. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I get way too into it. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Well, we talked about that before. Yeah. Is that any time that you do like a, a team sport like that? Or even a contact sport or partial contact sport. Right. It's yeah. very difficult for you to stay calm yeah. and relaxed, and you just don't enjoy it because right. that anxiety takes over. And yeah, right, right. Yeah. With that said, I mm-hmm. love hockey. Right. I'm always the goalie, though, mm-hmm. so I'm not checking people or anything like that. Right. So it's not a contact sport for me. Mm-hmm. Right. So do you think that this? Uh, so that, that if you're talking about soccer and stuff, that you must you must have been doing this for. A very very long time now from the time you were a little kid because you played soccer as a little guy yeah and um, but then so again saying- then again whenever I was that little mm-hmm. my mind didn't work exactly the same way it sure. works now sure sure and we've talked about that before too that even if there was some semblance then of what you're describing now you didn't have the verbiage to express it right but and you've matured so right they kind of morph with you hmm. um yeah i mean that's just the thing that i get out of this is that it's just a, an awful lot e- even before you leave the house there's an awful lot that you're already yeah. aware of and and you know this yeah. and, so let me ask you about something else. Mm-hmm. All right. You, another pattern is that you used to, and you still do, flip your pencil. Yeah, yeah. And you have a pattern in doing that, don't you? It's like, well, that, was, that was a fidget before there was fidgets. <laughs> <laughs> For you, it's called a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, until I got stabbed in the hand and I switched to pens that had caps. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I. It's not a particular pattern per se. It's more of the way that I do it. Like, imagine holding a pencil, uh, middle finger underneath, pointer finger on top, right, or thumb uh, holding it all together. Mm -hmm. And then slide the pencil or pen or whatever to the very tip of it so that the pointer finger is on the very end of it. Okay. Thumb stays where it is. Pointer finger pushes down at the same time the middle finger pushes up. And it flips the pencil really fast. Okay. Okay. And I got so used to doing it that I just do it without even realizing it mm-hmm. and without looking. Mm-hmm. And I catch it. You put up in the air and then you catch it. And yeah. You keep, you run, and I keep like, doing like it. Like it's a baton. Yeah. Yeah. Except I can't use a baton. <laughs> oh. So that's a pattern, and that helps you to calm down, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would do it during testing and things like that mm-hmm. at school. Mm-hmm. And some people would give me weird looks, but... <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And are there other patterns? 
Let me make sure that I get all the patterns that you do with your feet. With Is my... there anything else in uh, any other scenario? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one at least. Okay. Uh, and that's whenever I use the microwave and right. time things. Like, like there's you know how a microwave has a countdown timer. Right. So I always hate having the microwave go off. Oh yeah. Because it makes way too many beeps regardless of if you open it or not. Right. You have to stop it at one second. Yeah. Or it's going to beep. And even if you open it, you can't make it stop beeping. It's going to yeah. go to the duration. Yeah, so I have to stop it at one and then it only beeps once because I turned off the timer. Correct. And so, if I remember to turn off the timer. <laughs> I, I would say 9.9 9 out of 10. Yeah. You turn off the you're you're there. Yeah. I, actually, I don't recall the last time that it did all the beeps because you're there. Yeah. But uh, so let's say I'm focusing only on the microwave and I don't have to get a drink. I don't have to set anything else up for food. Okay. So I'm only focusing on that. I'll rock on my heels in time to the seconds. Like, I'll, I'll be on the balls of my feet, mm-hmm. right heel to the right, left heel to the right, left heel to the left, right heel to the left, and ba- and, go- and so on and so forth. Okay. It just repeats that. But every time my heel goes down, a second passes. You've timed it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, with the microwave. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I know it's an exact second. And so right before my heel touches the... For on the ones after the one second comes up, I know to open it mm. right before my heel comes down, so it stops it right before zero. So what I meant to ask you just now is that did you time it first, or did you did you were you did you find yourself doing this with your feet and then you recognize that oh it's in time yes or did you okay yeah that's actually okay it it was a coincidence and it was pretty cool. <laughs> so now you do it. I always I whenever you can. Yeah. Okay. Right. Are there is is that are there other things that you do in a pattern? Probably, but I can't think of them right now. All right. Let me think here. When you cut the dishes. grass. Dishes. Oh, okay. Dishes. Like not dishes, like cleaning dishes, but at the table, setting the table. Okay. I have to do it in a certain way. Like, I always put the plates down in a circle. Mm -hmm. Then following that same circle, I put the napkins down. Then I put the forks down on the outside of the napkin. If there's no knives needed, and if there are knives needed, like butter knives or whatever, I put the butter knives down with with the edge facing the plate. Okay, so wherever you started, mm-hmm. like you make circles around the table, yeah, over and over for whatever it is that you're putting down, yeah. Okay, and it would be uncomfortable. What if you if if you did were asked to do just one place at the at a time, that would feel uncomfortable. Off. off. Yeah, uncomfortable. Off. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. I was just asking you when you said that. That's a that's a really good example. I was just asking you about when you cut the grass. Yeah, I have a pattern to what I do with it. What do you uh, do? I usually start in the backyard. Uh-huh. Like if I have to put the back and the front yard, I usually start in the backyard in the very middle, in the very middle section, I should say, because we have a uh, walkway that goes around it, mm-hmm. around the middle of the yard, mm-hmm. and so. I do the middle section from the outside in. Okay. Uh, like, a, or like, I go in circles. You the, the, do the, that, don't you? Yeah. The, it's like huh. a concentric thing that gets smaller and smaller. Right. Mm-hmm. Then I do a little section right over here. Then I get the corner. So what you're saying is you always, just like the placemats. Mm-hmm. That you have a pattern to that. So you start... Do you always start at the same place yeah. setting? Okay. So when you're cutting the grass, you always start in the same section. Yeah. And then you do the next section 
is it always going to be the the, the second. Yeah. To, okay. And you always do that um, from the outside in. Yes. Okay. Huh. I've never noticed that. I've never noticed that. When I cut the graphs, I go length of one area, turn around, go back the length of the area. Turn yeah. around, go back the length of the area. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, what else? Oh, eating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, let's say I'm eating a Pop-Tart. Yes. Okay. You love Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Yes, but you... But... But you and I have been watching. We've changed our eating. Mm-hmm. Going to the gym. Yeah. So you haven't had pop tarts in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So do you miss them? Mm. <laughs> You're doing pretty good then. Yeah. Okay. I interrupted so, uh, you. Sorry. The way I eat pop tarts, for example, I go the I eat the two long side edges mm-hmm. up to the up to the the frosting mm-hmm. then I eat the two, the other two ends mm-hmm. just a, just a tiny bit mm-hmm. then I get the sides again so that like the two lengthwise sides again so that the edge of the frosting is bit off mm-hmm. and then there's only maybe three or four bites left and so I eat the side with the less filling first and leave the side with the most filling last <laughs> okay okay so you save the best for last yeah and I do that with all my food actually no matter what it is yeah huh. I try and save the best bite for last okay yeah well that's a good that's a good idea because um, if you if you're eating something, and the last bite that you have is is not good. Mm-hmm. Then you just go away. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's like disappointed. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is disappointing. Yeah. Right? Um. So these things, it seems like. It seems like, there's an awful lot that you. Take on. Every single day. Mm-hmm. That people are not aware of, and that you just do as habit. And. You're saying that if it doesn't happen in that particular pattern that's developed for you, that works in your life, it feels off. Yeah. And you can't really... Function properly. Right. Yes. But as you've gotten older, there's been an awful lot of things that in the past, in your past, would have gotten you stuck. And then now as you've matured and uh, you've gotten older, you just... Those things you've overcome, you've found ways to overcome them. Yeah, We've like talked- for, like for example, we have family and friends that come over for dinner all the time, mm-hmm. and so I had to get used to adapting to putting different settings down, like different number of plates down and things like that. Does it matter to you if they match? I usually put them to a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it's. You- it's fascinating to me, Josh, because you... I'm going to pay attention now. Yeah. There's things that you do that I just don't... You know, it's usually a thing where you do... You set the table. I say, thanks. Thank you for setting the table. Yeah. And, and then by the time I get out there with the food... Yeah. You know, um... It's I, already hectic. It already is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Well, one of the things I had to learn was that sometimes we don't have enough plates of one kind. Correct. And so, let's say that there's two short, or three short. I would make sure that, let's say it's just dad on one end and then and pappy on the other, mm-hmm. of the shorter sides. Mm-hmm. I would make sure that dad has one of the different plates, and then the places next to Nana and pappy uh, had different plates. So it would be like... So it broke the pattern up. Of the, of it, the, so they wouldn't be one side have one kind of plate and the other side have different. It would be evenly mixed throughout. Right, and it wasn't haphazard. You chose those places in order to yeah. continue the pattern. Yeah. Okay. Although usually I try and have the plates with a bigger surface. 
because I like food. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, but so that's just one example of how I've had to adapt to it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're sitting in a different spot than like you're sitting on the on the end with Dad, or you're or you're sitting on the side that's next to him. Uh, and so I, that's actually where I usually start is your place. Okay. Um, don't know why I just do. Um, but I've adapted to just starting wherever you're at, okay. rather rather than. And you know that sometimes. I sit either two different places. Mm-hmm. Is that hard for you to deal with? I that's what I'm saying is that I've adapted to that so that I just start those rounds going round and round and round placing everything by starting at your place. And it it's only just now occurring to me as I say that that I that I realize wow. I do that. Wow. And so when you're asking me how many people are going to be here you're not just asking to know how many place, plates you have to get out. You're calculating how many of what kind of plates, what kind of plates, what and, size plates, and then based on how many people are here, you know where I'm going to sit. Yeah. And. And then I can start placing them. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Never let it be said that I just ask things to know things. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and you know, you've always been, you've always been um, observant. And we that you you see things and you take more in of that environment than than I do. Mm-hmm. And. I guess this just goes along with that that you're there's so much more happening than it looks like is happening yeah and uh, I, it, it just seems uh, no wonder yeah no wonder there's times when you need to to, to, to take a break um, I don't have any more questions about that is there anything else that you'd like to, to talk about with that or any any feelings that you have about it or understandings that maybe would be helpful? I know that some things can be bothersome it, or seem bothersome to people outside of... Like, I've had people get frustrated at me for flipping my pencil in school. Mm-hmm. And... I'm lucky enough that I've had teachers and professors that have been understanding of that mm-hmm. and understand that that's something that I need to do. Mm-hmm. There's still some people that are like, why do you do that? Mm-hmm. But uh, I tell them, I essentially tell them the same thing I tell the professors. I do it so that it makes me feel better. So right. that I can concentrate mm-hmm. and just be okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And for the most part, people are pretty cool about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes, like, let's say it's during a test time or whatever. Mm-hmm. I've learned that sometimes it's easier if I'm away from them during a test time. Because sometimes people get distracted really easily. Right. Mm-hmm. And so... I've got people staring at me during a test because I'm flipping my pen. And you're not even aware that you're doing it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I just think it's amazing because, you know, during this conversation right now, um, I, I have an appreciation for what you're doing, what's happening that I have, up to this point, wasn't even aware of. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, just, it's just interesting. Yeah. Um, it, from, it may be interesting for you. Mm-hmm. It's just what I do for me. Right. And for you, it, you're every, describing this as being easy for you. It's just part of what you do. When I'm listening to it, 
I'm exhausted just listening to all that you take on. Yeah. yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Right? That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad that it works for you. Yeah. And, and I thought that it was important to talk about this just because, you know, there is just so much going on with you and um, maybe other people with autism are experiencing the same things and it might make sense to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it might help them to know that that you're doing this as well, but it also that that maybe people that have family members or people that they know with, with autism and they don't realize that, like you say, it's not just doing something. You, like you don't just ask something, but you also don't just do something just often without other um, involvement, which is you doing things to help yourself to calm down yeah I would like to point out one thing before we go okay look at where my feet are on the rolling chairs <laughs> yeah you're right the inside of my feet are, in the, are on the corners of the right. are on the very ends of the wheels <laughs> that's right so that their point the insides are of my feet are pointing are in, where the po- things point to that's amazing and I I never even think about it yeah yeah that's amazing <laughs> Cool, cool. So I would say that this was kind of um, complicated. Yeah. It might just be for me. Maybe, no, no maybe it's, every- it's complicated, but it's so much easier to just do it. Okay. And I don't know if this was an easy, uh, an easy follow for people listening to us. I hope it was. I hope it was too. But if if if, if you, anybody has any questions about this, you know, please let us know because yeah. we we you know. I'd love for you to understand exactly what it is that he's talking about. I know, it confuses me. So that's what I'm saying, <laughs> that, that there might be somebody out there that just had a hard time following it. Yeah. Um, long, yeah, let us uh, know. Long story short, I step on the corners or the bulges of the walls and the, the arcs of the uh, telephone poles oh, and everything it. else like that. Okay. Where, yeah. Wherever there's... There's uh, an edge or a rounded edge. Mm-hmm. That's where I try and step. Okay. Where it points Got it. to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it. Thanks for explaining all that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. We, st- we appreciate you so much. Um, and it was brought to my attention that the podcast... I mean, if you're listening to us, then you're listening to us. Um, and I'll put this on... Um, on the as I posted as well, but it was brought to my attention that sometimes people are having a, um, a, a hard time listening, and I th- we are on something called Spotify. So if you know of anybody that's having a hard time, um, uh, somebody was so so nice to share that that that's how they were able to listen. They they went to Spotify and and that's how they're doing it, and they um, shared that information and it's already helped people. Yeah. Um, so that so that was Candace. Thank you, Candace, for sharing that. Yeah, thanks. Uh-huh. Um, so we you sh- should not. Um, I, I, somebody else said that they had to pay for it, and that, that sh- just shouldn't be the case. Um, mm-hmm. If they're if you're having a, a hard time, you see it posted, but you're not able to listen. Please send a message um, or go to my website. It's um, sonyaking.com. And uh, let us know, because we want to make sure that this is as easy for everybody to listen to as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate you so much, and w- more than we could possibly ex- express. Um, You'd probably have an easier time expressing it than I would. <laughs> you do a pretty good job. You do a pretty good job. So let us know if you want us to speak at your event. Yeah. We'd love to. And uh, have a great, great day. And um, we'll talk to you next time. We appreciate you. Love you. Bye.